The topic of this lecture is endogenous candida and ophthalmitis. As usual, we are going to start with introduction. Candida, usually the commensal candida albicans, can be introduced into the eye from the external environment by trauma or surgery and can be spread from fungal keratitis. But endogenous infection is an important alternative route. Risk factors for metastatic spread include intravenous drug abuse, aseptic focus associated with an indwelling catheter, chronic lung disease such as cystic fibrosis, general debilitation, and diabetes. It is relatively uncommon in AIDS. Coming towards the clinical features, systemic candidiasis may already have been diagnosed in the presenting patient. Up to a third of patients with untreated candidemia will develop ocular uh, involvement. Peripheral fundus lesions may cause little or no visual disturbance, while central lesions or severe vitritis will manifest earlier. Progression is typical, typically much slower than bacterial and ophthalmitis. Bilateral involvement is common. As far as the ocular involvement is concerned, patient might present with anterior uveitis, but it is relatively uncommon or mild in early disease but may become prominent later. Vitritis may be marked uh, with fluffy cotton ball or string of pearl colonies, sometimes progressing to abscess formation, as it is seen in the figure here. In the first figure, it is marked vitritis, so we cannot see uh, the fundus clearly. But in the second figure, there is this cotton ball appearance, which can be clearly seen. Another type of presentation is chorioretinitis, one or more small creamy white lesions with overlying vitritis. As it can be seen in the figure here, there is this focal area of chorioretinitis. Retinal necrosis may also occur. As it can be seen here, the white patches depicting areas of retinal necrosis. And retinal necrosis may lead to retinal detachment with severe proliferative vitreoretinopathy. Now, investigations required are vitreous biopsy, preferably using a vitreous cutter rather than a needle to identify the organism, PCR and culture, and identifying the sensitivities. Systemic investigations, for example, blood and urine cultures may also be required in certain cases. Next is the treatment. Now, the agent should be chosen with local mi microbiological specialist guidance. Infectious Disease Society of America guidelines uh, suggest intravenous amphotericin B in combination with oral flu cytosin, but resistance is a concern. Boriconazole orally or intravenously has a broad spectrum of antifungal action with low re reported resistance and a high ocular penetration. Adjunctive intravitreal treatment may be given 100 microgram in 0.1 ml with serial injections probably needed. The other option is pars plana vitrectomy, which uh, should be considered at an early stage, especially for severe or unresponsive disease, as well as providing a uh, substantial culture specimen 
It reduces fungal and antigen load and facilitates therapeutic agent penetration and clears the ocular media. So the topic of endogenous uh, candida uh, infection or endophthalmitis is concluded with this. So it seems it is not a very common infection, but uh, if it happens, it's very debilitated and should be treated carefully. Uh, thank you all for listening and if you like uh, the lecture, please click on the like button and subscribe. Thank you all.